saying this topic that I'm speaking about is something that's very passionate to me. Uh, music is something that I'm extremely passionate about, live music in particular, but really all forms of music. Uh, I believe that music stretches through all cultures and has stretched through many different languages and races and everything through this, all through time. Uh, nothing has the ability to bring people together, I believe, than like music does. Uh, the question we have tonight is, is why isn't Greenville a, uh, a music destination? I hope, uh, from a, at least from a venue owner, I will give you uh, some insight into why I think that is. Uh, but it's a great discussion to have. Uh, music matters. Uh, where words leave off, music begins. One of my favorite quotes is by an actor named Johnny Depp, who we all should know who that is. And he said, uh, pardon me for reading the cards here, music touches us emotionally where word alone does not. Now imagine this, imagine life without music. How different would life be if we didn't have music in it? I mean, it's kind of hard to imagine because it really touches all of our lives, but there would be no concerts, there would be no band at your school, there'd be no dancing, no dance teams. I mean, our world would be completely different if it wasn't for music. Uh, you know, and music at the same time has, has, has the ability to move us. Uh, music brings back some of our, child, our most cherished memories. It can bring back some of the worst memories too, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, but it has the ability to move us. I mean, how many of us have been uh, caught chair dancing or car dancing? <laughs> I know I have, or you know, dancing no one's seeing us. Uh, there's a, sorry, I moved back too far. A viral video right now, I don't know if y'all have seen it, of this cop in Dover, Delaware, I believe it was, where he was dancing to Taylor Swift. You just look at that, and if you don't see how the, the power of our music is, then you, you just don't know. You haven't experienced it yet yourself. Uh, getting back on topic here is why aren't we a music destination? Now let me start off by saying this. Greenville has a plethora of very talented and very uh, gifted artists, you know, musicians, singers, and songwriters. There's a lot of talent here and uh, we've only been open since September here and I've been you know, I kind of knew that, but I, I'll tell you, I've been blown away by some of the local acts that we've had come play, even on our open mic nights. There's just people up there that, that I've ended up booking on a night later on. There's a lot of talent here, and I'm talking all music genres, from jazz to country to rock and roll to single guy with guitar to a full band, from El McCain to Craig Sorrells. I mean, they're all over the place, and there's a lot of talent here. And we have 1.6 million visitors that stayed in our hotel rooms here last year. You had that with the people that live here and then people live in other communities, Anderson, Clemson, Spartanburg, to visit us. There's a huge marketplace here, as we, we all know, I mean, Grimble's growing. Uh, but I don't think the public really understands uh, how artists support themselves. It just is my opinion. Uh, it's hard for an artist to make a living. I mean, we've all heard the, the expression, starving artists. Uh, in the music industry, not matter what size the artist is, they make most of their living off live performances. Uh, even some of your big artists that have a lot of albums they sell, or CDs, I'm old school, I say albums, I still play vinyl. Uh, but they still make more money off live performances than their sales of their, of their music. Uh, and we all enjoy good live music. At least I know I do. But I don't think everybody really understands probably the years of practice and dedication that is taken to have that artist on that stage presenting in front of you, whether it be at the small venue or a, or a large concert. I mean, they, they, they practice in their garages and day in and day out, day in and day out, just like a lot of any other professions. I'm going to relate it to what I did growing up. I played football. Long before I played football at Clemson, Yes, if there's any non Clemson fans out there that play football at Clemson, I'm sorry. Uh, long before I played in front of Death Valley and people paid $50 a ticket and we were on uh, national television and, and whatnot because that was back in the Ford Airs, uh, I started off at Pee Wee football. And my mom had to pay for my permission and we probably had a thing called Super Saturday where they all 
pay ten dollars for everybody to play, and then I graduated up to middle school and high school and so on, and you know, fans paid ten dollars on a Saturday, Friday night to go watch our high school play. Yeah. Music is the same thing, and it, and it graduates the same way. People probably start off in their garage playing for their family, then they play at their local coffee shop, you know, they might move up to a smaller venue, and so on and so on, and before the picking on Bruce Springsteen, somebody, plays in front of the, you know, the Georgia Dome in front of 80,000 people. He once started off with three people. So uh, that is why I think it is very important for, to support live music venues, because you are actually supporting the creation of art, just like my mom supported me playing football. I hope you all understand that analogy right there. Uh, Here's what I believe, you know, and what I believe, what I've seen here, to get music to really set in here. I think there really needs to be, uh, for lack of a better word, an awareness, uh, both on the local community level, both with our local le uh, leaders and with our local governments. Uh, that they, you know, support the arts program. Now, when I say support the arts, I mean all arts. Greenville is a very, has supported a lot of arts, and I'm not saying they're doing a bad job at that, so I want to make sure I clarify that, but all arts, you know, paintings and artwork, sculptures and art, art is an art form, music's an art form too, all kinds of art form, all kinds of music are art form. Uh, I think if people understood what it takes to become an artist and what it takes to be that way or, and to support an artist, maybe they would feel more apt to supporting it themselves and get out and support uh, a local live music venue or support a gallery or whatever art you may want to choose to perform. Uh, so coming back to kind of get back on topic of live music venues, which is what I am. I'm a live music venue owner, so I'm kind of giving this from my perspective. I really look forward to hearing our artist tonight to hear from his perspective too. Uh, a concert at a live music venue is, is a lot like a, for lack of a better word, a marriage between the artist and the venue owner or manager. They both have a part. They both have to work at it. They both have different things they have to do and it has to kind of come together. If one person doesn't do it, it kind of fails and just like sometimes marriages do. Uh, I think it's, it's very important for venue owners and artists to work together. Um, but nothing, in my, in my estimation, what I believe, beats how live music is. You can't get it on a CD. You can't get it on a, on a video you watch on the TV. You can't get it from any experience except being there. It's uh, like hearing it in 3D. It's my best, best way to describe it. It's just nothing else like it. Once upon a time, it's kind of what I stated before, all these big name artists that you can name now, your favorite artists that were playing in big venues, played in small venues. So I'm kind of coming back with that again. You know, Bob Dylan got his start at a coffee shop. He used to go from coffee shop to coffee shop and play guitar and sell CDs. We all know who Bob Dylan is, right? At least I hope you do. <laughs> I like to use that because I started off as a coffee shop myself. So it kind of, it kind of fits. I believe it is essential for the growth of music in a town to have good live music venues for these artists to play in. You get known as, as a live music town. I believe it was CBS that did the new story on us. Well, they did the best places to visit in the world and Greenville was one of them. They labeled us the next Austin. Has anybody seen that? Yeah. I'm sure you can find it on you know, Facebook reposted somewhere or something, but it was a CBS national news program and they named, I can't remember all the cities named like Egypt was one to visit, and there was uh, Iceland, and there was you know, some places like that. And then only two places in the U.S. were mentioned. It was Greenville, South Carolina, and a, and a suburb of L.A. So I thought it was a pretty good idea. But they called us the next Austin, so somebody sees something in us. Um, kind of going down, there's also a difference between what I call a live music venue and, and a bar. And I offer alcohol in my place, too, so I... Uh, I'm not trying to downcoat anything, uh, but uh, there's other places that are bar first and they offer music on the weekends. They usually cater to what I call cover bands. Now, there's nothing wrong with cover bands either, I'm not being negative towards them, 
A lot of people make a good living off cover bands. I have fun, you know, listening to cover bands. I don't, I not enjoy it, but I don't think they exactly uh, get to express their artwork. I'm, I know a lot of people who play cover band music to support themselves, and they play their original music at home and don't really have a place to, except with their family or so, to, to play it. So I believe that uh, some there's also a thing called a listening room that kind of specializes in singer songwriters. But they kind of have a downfall too, whereas if they only have a live music venue that do singer songwriters and that's all they do, what do they do when there's not music? There's no you know income for that venue owner. You know, income's got to go both ways. It's got to go to the, the business owner and to the artist for it to keep going. Uh, I believe we all understand business like that, right? Uh, kind of bring this back full circle to, you know, I hate to talk about myself a little bit, but this is where I interject about some of my vision of how I see differently. Uh, I don't know if anyone here has been to Mojo's, but something we pride ourselves to do is, is combo both of those together. Uh, we like to bring nothing, mainly, I think we do, we require 70% of original music to play at Mojo's. Now we have an open mic night on a Wednesday night that anybody can play. We've had some very talented people. We've moved out of there, but that's not all that we do over there. We are, a, you know, a coffee shop. We do breakfast, lunch, dinner. We do late night desserts. We have a full cocktail bar. We do that for a reason, is and it's because we have that income stream all day long, so that when we have these artists on the weekends, we can pay them properly. And we have various different ways we pay them. We pay them. Uh, some play for a percentage of the, uh, of the sales that night. That works out good. Some people we sell tickets to. Uh, something that I have found uh, needs improvement on, which is why I like the awareness program, is some people have a tough time even paying five dollars to go see a local item. I had a friend of mine, and I'm going to steal your line, David, I'm sorry, but some people would rather pay five dollars for a parking spot than they would to go see a band play. <laughs> Five dollars for an asphalt for three hours, and then to see a local artist who might be the next big thing. I mean, it, it does happen. You can see the next big thing sometimes and not even know it. It happened to me. It's probably what changed my life as far as music. I was a bouncer at Tiger Town Tavern in Clemson. <laughs> And uh, it was a Thursday night in the summer, and if anybody had been in Clemson in the summer, it's not exactly known for a lot of people around there at that point in time. And so I was the first one cut that night, and they had a band in there playing named Hootie and the Blowfish. <laughs> this was long before that. They didn't even have an album out yet. So I heard about this great band that was going on at TDs. So I walk up to TDs since I got cut first, and cut first, and there was this guy playing guitar, and there was a drummer and a horn player. These guys are great. These guys are from, from Charlottesville. I said, man, who is these people? I want to I hear about them. He's the lead singer is named Dave Matthews. So in Clemson, South Carolina, two different places that are bars, there was Hootie the Blowfish and Dave Matthews <laughs> on a Thursday night, and there was probably 40 people between two places. <laughs> so I've kind of gotten off topic, which I can do, but go out and, and support those people. Go out and spend the five dollars to go support your local musician and that's a that'd be a big way to to get that going. If there's a good flow of artists and people supporting artwork, then I believe Greenville definitely has the power to become the next Austin like they say. I'm telling you right now, if you haven't experienced it, the artists are here. There's a lot of artists here and we we are all bringing artists in from Athens, from Nashville, from Orlando. We have a lady, a lady coming up from Tallahassee, Florida to play Saturday night, play right here in Greenville. So, uh, I close with, I don't know if I, how I'm doing on time. Doing okay? Uh, I close with this, we believe that Greenville definitely counts and definitely has the power to become that local music venue, local 
you know, live place to the next Austin or however you want to label it, if the people in the community support it, because the artists are here, 